you know this, most of you know this, David is not just an awesome real estate broker. Um, he is not just a leader of our firm, but he's also an economist. So he does know what he's talking about. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. So without any further ado, David Hoffman. All right. Oh, thanks. In case I appreciate the last name. Um, so I, I didn't ask for this table to be like a podium. I just don't have anywhere. I don't think we have anywhere else to put it. Um, so it's funny. Someone was asking. No, it's fine. Um, someone was asking this morning if it's going to be doom or gloom, or if it's going to be like all roses and and tulips. And I'm going to make you wait about 45 minutes for that because I want to build a foundation. That's one thing I always want to share with you guys is I want you to know, I mean, I appreciate that, Megan. Yes, I have background as an economist, but it's, it's also common sense. And, you know, the other day, one of our agents made a post with an article and sometimes the articles are great, but guys, what I've learned in life is more often than not, there's a lot of fluff. And the best part of the article is the title. And the title doesn't really have anything to do with the content and the content doesn't have anything to do with the truth. It's what is going to sell subscriptions. Um, and so remember we talked last year, a year and a half ago, when rates were still like 2.5%, rates are never going to go up, rates go up. I was like, yeah, guys, they are. I'm not chicken little. The rates are going to go up. And rates should have went up in the beginning of the pandemic. Rates should have went up like they've always done in the past, guys. Rates go up, mortgage rates, when demand is so high that they can go up. And demand is so high... I mean, Shuffle was just saying, like, refinances were through the roof, right? Like, you know, um, even if you wanted to be here a year ago, you couldn't be here. You have too many closings. And so you can raise rates, kind of like prices. Rates are the, the mortgage term for a price. You raise price when demand is exceeding supply. Does that make sense? Because you can raise price. But they didn't raise rates because there was no plan for the pandemic. And so in 2020, rates are crazy, crazy low and demand's through the roof. In 2021, rates are crazy low and demands through the roof. And as the pandemic starts to end, mortgage rates can't stay that low. They just, they, they, they can't. You know, you can't sell them, you can't do anything with them, and companies can't stay in business. I mean, it's just brass tacks, right? It's kind of like inflation. But then what happens with the rate? It goes from two and a half to seven and a half. What it should have done is every quarter gone from two and a half to three to three and a half to four, from four and a half to five, but it didn't. So you got sicker shock. Then meet inflation. Well, inflation is the same way. Companies are like, well, we really need to raise the price of bread because there's no supply. So it's costing us more and there's no labor. So it's costing us more and everything's costing us more, but we can't charge more for bread. We can't charge $3.99 for a loaf of bread because people won't buy it. Or they think they won't buy a house or their bread. Or there's enough buyers, there's not enough buyers for the bread because they're not leaving their house. And there's enough buyers for the house because there's not housing in the market. The demand was really high for bread and the demand was really high for houses, but there wasn't enough of them, so no one really realized how strong the demand was. Does that make sense? Like if there's only one house in the neighborhood for sale and it goes on the contract, if you're not in the real estate industry, you're not in the market in 2020, 2021, 2022, you don't know how strong the demand was. Like if you don't know the sellers, you just see that it went on the contract. You don't know if it was one buyer or a thousand. Does it make sense? If you can't leave your house, people were buying less groceries, right? And then supply chain issues were bringing less groceries. And so no one needs as much as some people don't have what they need, unfortunately, but a lot of Americans have more than they need. This so is during the pandemic, everyone started hunkering down. And some people hoarded, but most just bought less. And so it showed a lack of demand when the demand was actually through the roof, if that makes sense. So mortgage rates were really low, and then they just went through the roof. And it's just sticker shock. And it doesn't matter how good or bad the news is. If you get the news without warning, it's bad news. If anyone's ever tried to put a good idea out there to their kids, their spouse, pretty much anyone, and there was not an expectation in advance, and it was not warning or a week's notice, and you didn't let it be their idea, it's a bad idea. And then a week later, it's like, hey, I got a great idea. Well, that was your idea two weeks ago but you didn't give them a chance to process it, so it's a bad idea. It's no. So, <laughs> and the crowd cheers, amen. Um, so um, we'll leave that one at that, Brad. But, but Does that make sense, though? If the 2.5% rate went to 3, you don't really notice it. The 3 goes 3.5, it doesn't really hurt. Because still historically low, 3 to 3.5, et cetera. Same with inflation. Inflation was negative. A decade ago, it was negative, guys. Last year it was like 10%, 7, 8, 9, 
it went from like one, two percent to eight, nine percent. If bread is 249 and it goes to 259, 269, you don't really notice it. You really don't. Even if you buy a loaf of bread and a gallon of milk and the three goes to 350, and maybe your total bill goes from 120 to 130. You don't like it, but it went up 8%. It didn't go from 120 to 220. And, and your gas didn't go from $40 to $80. And, and then you're, and you're thinking like, okay, now my gas bill went from $90 to $170. And my power bill went from 120 to 240. So everything was, there's so much fear during the pandemic. Everyone was so hunkered down that nothing happened for like two years. You guys realize that, right? Like nothing happened. The government didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. Daryl, you and I, and many others try to keep our kids alive. You know, Principal Daryl, you know, I'm trying to homeschool. We tried the homework. And, and you know, like Shof was saying earlier, the real estate market was hot. Well, the real estate market was hot, not because we sold a lot of homes. The real estate market was hot because there were no homes. So we forced demand. You know, low supply forces up demand. We always talk about how low supply and high demand raises prices, but really it's a seesaw. If supply is really low, it's going to push up demand even if you don't want it. You know, if everyone else wants it, then you want it, even if you don't want it. That's a tricky thing. You know, like we end up getting what we don't need. And so you saw it last year, people are buying houses they don't need. They're buying houses too big. They're throwing down six figure due diligence checks because everyone got caught up in that. I mean, we talked about this for years. Remember, I, kind of, I try to prepare us for the turbulence of the Tickle Me Elmo phase, which is what we did last year. The Princess Diana Beanie Baby, it's worth like $8 now. It was worth 10 grand 20 years ago. Not because everyone, like everyone loves Princess Diana, but no one loved Beanie Babies. They just loved it because everyone else loved it. And then they, the news picked up on it. So then it's like, oh, what's this Beanie Baby? Well, it's, it's a $3 little stuffed animal that your, your Yorkie eats and, and then your kid puts in his mouth after there's a slobber all over it. But now it's worth like 10 grand. So mortgage rates go through the roof and everyone stops. Inflation goes through the roof and everyone stops. Does that make sense? And so last year started really strong, right? Like no one talked about the economy being bad because the housing market, guys, is like a firm foundation for the economy. Most people, if it's a 300,000 home or $3 million home, it's their largest asset class. And it's usually where the majority of their retirement comes from. It's where the majority of their wealth, even generational wealth, comes from. And they borrow against it to go to college. They borrow against it for vacation. And they definitely borrow against it for renovations. And so everyone felt rich you know stock market before last year was going through the roof we talked about that it hit all-time highs rates are at all-time lows you're borrowing money i was talking to people that were borrowing money at two and a half percent to buy stock that was making 20 percent people everyone was smart everyone was smart and the media was so focused on the pandemic they never talked about actually what was happening and the fact that everyone's borrowing on everything and everyone's paying more for homes than what they're worth everyone's paying more for bread and gas and everything then was worth, travel stopped, then travel starts again. So what's going on now? Well, the second half of last year, the pandemic ended, right? I mean, it was like a day of the week we decided it ended. I mean, COVID's still around. I mean, I, I mean it's, it's, it was like this day of the week. It's like, hey, what's going on today? Like, oh, it's kind of sunny outside, a little overcast. You know, um, it's 58 degrees. You know, kids are doing good. The pandemic just ended today. I mean, it's not funny. Like, I, I had some dear friends who lost loved ones. It was really bad. There's never a plan for it because we've never had it before. But the economy now is, is responding. There's good news. There's not really any bad news. And there's going to be encouraging news. But I want to keep digging into the variables. I always do that, guys. I always do that. Like for me, I don't like to fly, but I do it a lot just because, you know, I don't like it because I have to because God sends me on the road to share the good news wherever I have to go. But what I love is when the pilot or a flight attendant says, hey, just so you know, those bumps are just the air. Like the plane isn't shutting down, there's no engine going out. That noise is actually the landing gear coming out, which means we're getting ready to land. But I don't know, if I don't know, I just go in my own head and I read about like the Nigerian Airlines crash from like 1973 and I'm like, this is definitely what's happening right now. It's, the plane's falling out of the sky. And like, no, it's not. And when I see the flight attendants like just being patient and calm and ask me if I want another drink of you know, water, of course. And, um, and I'm like, yeah, but why are you being so patient? Like, well, all you're doing is riding over air because they have perspective, right? Like they, they actually know what I don't know because they see it. I want you guys to know, not what I know, but what I see. I've been doing homework every day. 
Now, back in the day, I was telling Jessica the other day, I was like, this is actually going to be the hardest day of the market. It's going to be the easiest because it's really kind of dry what's going on. And it is encouraging news for you guys as in the real estate market in Charlotte, but as hopefully the experts of what to do next and also for your families. But it's also difficult because I'm not going to lie, like the TI-83 days when I was in middle school and I was like, oh, I could just put like some cheat notes. And I didn't actually have a TI-83, but I thought to myself I could just cheat and put it on a piece of paper and put it back then. But I didn't have a TI-83. So I told my friends they could do it, at least for them to cheat because I couldn't cheat. And now it's called Google, right? Like everything's on Google. <laughs> when I first started doing these, when I was an economist in DC, I was like, wait, can I Google everything? And the chief economist was like, I mean, you can, but do you believe what you're reading? And I was like, I don't know what you mean. And, and I started realizing that like the most attractive, pretty stories are not always, you know, the truth is not always the ones that get open that are like the, the most flashy, if that makes sense. Um, and when I land this plane, it's going to actually be pretty smooth, which is good news. And there's a plan for that, how to land the plane smooth during some turbulence. And so for years, guys, like when I was in DC as an economist, and even when I moved to Charlotte, I was like, I really want to read what I'm, I really want to pass forward what I'm reading. But it's like, you know, the Zillow story. Yeah, Charlotte's awesome. And it probably is one of the housing, hottest markets. But it's no different than a postcard that says, Bob Smith is the number one agent in Mint Hill under 475 and over 375 with master down for homes that went on the contract in this two week window. It's no different than the infomercial. Like you can say whatever you want to tell whatever story you want. Charlotte's definitely one of the hottest housing markets, but if New York is struggling, Charlotte's in trouble. And Charlotte is a really attractive place to live, but we've talked about this in the past. If you can't sell your house in San Francisco, it doesn't really matter what's happening in Charlotte. The good news is there's so many people moving here that we're in a great place. This is good news. There's no doom and gloom today. I'm going to give you more of perspective and a plan, perspective of where we are, which you haven't read yet, but then also a plan of how to navigate the waters. Because anytime a boat capsizes in the ocean or someone drowns, because they didn't have a plan for how, how ferocious those currents were, right? But then others outside of Titanic, like most boats, that was just a once in a lifetime thing. They navigate it all. And you go on cruises and it's just fine and it's smooth. So I'm gonna navigate the air pockets for you so you can have a, a great trip, fair enough? So if you read online, what's really crazy is the good news is it's so rocky in the media that it's actually probably pretty smooth. If you read online, I mean, because I have to like, I mean, I'm, I'm, because if it's obvious and they have no story, right? If you read online, I can't make this up. I did so much homework this week and the last week to prepare. And I did two different things. I looked at the actual variables I'm going to share with you about like 10-year treasury bond and the yield curve and the stock market and other housing markets that impact Charlotte. You know, and I looked at gold and silver and you know, gold's up 8% year to date. And the last time we did say the market, we talked about it was going to go up. And the first half of last year was only up. It was down. Gold was down the first half of last year because real estate was through the roof. Gold then went up 12% the second half of the last year to finish 5%. So the last day of the market, we talked about how gold is going to pick up steam, and it did. It went up 12%. And, and in that last year, or seven months, it's gone up almost 20%. Gold's going through the roof. Gold goes up when inflation is high. So it's kind of obvious, right? Like we timed gold with the inflation. So I'm looking at these variables. I'm looking at the stock market. Stock market was down 20% last year. It was actually down 18 to 25%. If you look at the S&P, the Dow and the NASDAQ, there's different numbers. You guys all know what that, that is. Gold's up more than silver, but silver is like a less expensive option. I'm telling you all these things, one, so that your clients can know all the different variables. So you don't just say, oh, it's a great time to sell. It's a great time to buy. It's a great time to get a loan. And you don't actually know what you're talking about. I don't want you guys to have all the information to be the expert. Because we're not being the friend if we're not being the expert, guys. We're being disingenuous. You can't fake it to make it with a real friend. And if you're being present, you can't really look someone in the eyes and just give them a script of like, now's the time to do it. Why? I mean, I, because that's what I do for a living. I mean, if I change careers, I would tell you now's the time to buy a minivan, you know, but I'm not in that industry anymore. So, so gold, gold is up almost 8% year to date, but it's going to come down in about two weeks. You know how I know that? I'm not Nostradamus. I don't have a crystal ball but I've watched trends and gold always comes down in early February. And then it goes back up in mid-March and then it comes down before Memorial Day and it kind of goes up and down. Stock market kind of follows the same exact path. Inflation doesn't, but the stock market does, okay? So the stock market goes up, gold goes up. 
You see that already this year. Stock market's up 5%, gold's up 8%. Inflation's actually starting to come down. Now, things don't happen at the exact same time. I tell my son to do something. That never happens at the exact same time. <laughs> I tell my son to do something. He never listens. My younger son then responds faster and says, hey, Kane didn't listen. So there's like a huge lag time between when I say something and my oldest son does it. And so gold goes up with inflation, but it takes longer for gold to come back down because gold is a consumer and inflation is a government. Does that make sense? Like the inflation, the government decides what prices are going to be. You, you, you realize that, right? That's not a Republican or Democrat thing. That's actually like when, 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 when the rate gets raised on short-term anything and everything's more expensive, then everything's more expensive, right? And like when supply chain shuts down and supply goes down, even if demand doesn't move, which it does, it's like a double negative because now there's less of it, so it costs more. If three homes are for sale in a community, our home's worth more or less than if there's only one home for sale. It's worth more if there's only one home, right? But we haven't talked about demand yet. So less supply increases values, which also means it increases prices. Now inflation and gold goes up together, but inflation moves a lot faster. It's a lot more liquid. You can't just tell everyone to buy and sell gold. Like, I, mean, I don't talk to you all about buying gold. I don't talk to you all about trading silver. You need to know that stuff because when you're talking to people, every buyer is an investor, guys. I don't want you to think like, this is why it's called the state of the market because there's so many markets. There's the stock market, there's the housing market, there's the global markets, there is the precious metal market, there is the bonds market, there's so many markets. Now the 10-year treasury bond started this year at almost 5%. And that actually means that they see that it's gonna be a good long-term economy, right? Remember we talked about how if the yield is negative, that means you know, they're expecting inflation to be through the roof and we can't afford to pay you much money. Well, it's down 42% in the last three weeks. It's actually not a bad thing. It just means that inflation is coming down. So when inflation comes down, treasury bonds come down because you guys know what a treasury bond is? You give $1,000 and then you hope, you know, 10 years later, you got 4% a year and people retire on that, right? They have half a million dollars in the bank at retirement at 70 and they get 4% a year. That half a million dollars gives them $20,000 a year. Does that make sense? It's another revenue stream. Well, when inflation goes up, they have to raise that rate because then that 20,000 doesn't have the same impact. They have to make it where that 20,000 can go to 25,000 because you need more money, right? It's kind of it, it, it's it, it's kind of like if um if the government if the government says okay, inflation's higher, so we're raising federal minimum wage. I mean, these things are all out there. Um, I'm throwing everything at you. There's nothing political here. I'm giving you all the variables out there. And then I'll pull it all together. We'll land the plane like we always do. We always save. We always make it to our destination. And hopefully, we're all smarter for it. So inflation goes through the roof. Rates go through the roof. People freak out. They stop buying homes. They stop buying bread. And they hunker down, right? They, they hold their cash. But then they're like, wait a minute. Why am I holding my cash? You know, I've got this high interest rate credit card that keeps going higher and higher. They don't realize in real time, guys. Consumers do not respond in real time. They respond either when it really hurts their pocketbook or when the media makes it such a priority that that's all they see and then they share and then they read it and they send it and then someone makes a TikTok video and it goes viral and then they respond. So the reason why gold's going up, even though inflation's coming down, is because consumers haven't responded yet, but they will. And so it'll come back down. Then it'll go back up just because it goes up and down all year. Um, and then it'll go back up because inflation is coming down, but it's never going to go as low as it was. Inflation will never get down to negative again unless we are in a depression, which we're not in, we will not go in. Uh, again, it went too high to stop the economy. The only reason it goes negative is if the economy is, is so bad that they need to prop it up. You understand it was so strong that they actually made it harder to do things, right? Like, which on the front end is like good news. Like, hey, the good news is the economy is crazy strong. The bad news is we're gonna stop it. I actually didn't, ne I never knew that. I mean, I knew that was possible. I actually didn't ever imagine that. Like if I ever said to you, like if Rachel, Rachel was like, all right guys, for the next two weeks, we can't handle it. You are not allowed to sell a house. Like if Shof's like, hey guys, I know you guys send us a lot, but you guys cannot send us any more business. Like closing attorneys are like, we do not want business. Teresa's like, I do not want any more loans. That's literally what happened a year ago. Does that make sense? No, no it didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean. No. I'm being funny. I didn't, okay. I never said that. <laughs> Everyone outside of Teresa did say, the government said that. Their wish list was less demand. You never want less demand. I understand why. But it was one of those things where it's like, okay, let's have one play date for my boys. They're having fun. 
But if you have 20 play dates at the same time, it's too much. And that's what happened. The pandemic made it too much. Okay, so we're, is that an important call? No, actually, right. it's the music that just came on. Oh, thank you. Is that, is this, this really is like the Emmy. So it's, it's, so you were actually planted there in the Emmys, like you got to play the music and tell yeah. me to shut up. I have two minutes left, right, to get off stage. Okay. Um, so, so gold right now, when you're talking to a buyer, because every buyer is an investor, if I had a dollar for every time I heard and wish I didn't hear, do you want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Well, I don't want to invest, but I do want to overpay. I do want to buy. I just want to buy a bad deal. I mean, Jeff, if we're laughing because it's so true, right? Like, do you want to buy, sell, or get a good deal? I don't want a good deal. I just want to buy. Like, I want to overpay. It's just like, the, it's just like this. I hate to say it. It's just like cheesy. Guys, I take this really serious. Real estate is life or death. You are changing lives either for the better or for the worse. This is literally that important. So, okay, let's keep going. Now that you know what's going on with interest rates, we'll talk about in a second what's going to happen with them. Rates went through the roof. They're slowly starting to come down. But here's the challenge. They're probably where they should be for a while. Because when they were really low, they were too low. And, and so they're probably where they should be. Inflation's still too high, but it's going to come back down. But it won't get down as, as low as it was because it's probably getting closer to where it should be, but it just spiked. You know, when Elon Musk sends those rockets straight up, how long does it last? Not very long, right? It comes right back down. Everything that's going straight up will come back down, except for housing prices. Some good news there. It'll come down a little bit. It won't be as bad as half the media stories, because half the media stories say housing prices are going to plummet. Half the media stories say housing is going to keep going up forever. Well, let's go with this one for a second here. We knew stock market was going to go down last year, guys, because rates went up. We knew stock market was going to go down last year, guys, because rates went up. Yep, I said that twice. Mortgage rates went up on long term and short term rates went up. So if it costs you more money to borrow on your credit card, you just don't feel as good about buying or investing. And if it costs more to buy a car, and if it costs more to borrow for furniture, and if it costs more to buy a house, and if it costs more to cost more, you don't have this extra cash to just put in this like fictitious account that hopefully will grow over time. And so there's less buyers, that makes sense. But then also on the corporate side, earnings go down because if it costs more to do everything, the company is like, well, we have lower earnings, we have less profits. Does it make sense? Everything's costing more for them, which is why they're paying it forward. And so again, like, I love hearing like people think that I'm smart. No, I just pay attention. I'm being present, guys. That's the thing. The trick is not to be the smartest person in the room. The, the, the trick is to be the expert, to know what you know and what you don't know, and to be present because you care as the friend. And so I'm just very present most of the time, not always. And so I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the, the obvious stuff. You know, when they make everything so expensive, you just don't have extra money. You have to put gas in your car. You have to make your mortgage payment. You have to pay for utilities. You have to buy bread. You have to do a lot of things with commodities. You have to get diapers for your babies. You don't have to invest in the stock market. And then the company has to sell those diapers and sell the bread and sell the cars and sell the gas and sell the utilities. And they have to pay a certain price. So they have to raise the price to get a profit, which hurts us and it becomes this vicious cycle. So then they, they try to get the prices down because this balance between, I want more demand from consumers. We have to lower prices to get that, but then we're losing profit. And so companies are struggling. Now, a lot of those companies had a lot of government funding, which is now gone. Just like in 2008, this is not like 2008, but I'm just giving you a lot of perspective, guys. I'm throwing a lot at you in a short period of time. I'm giving you everything that I know and everything that's gone on in the last two, three years. In 2008, when the banks were getting all the funding, they took the money, but didn't fix the problem, right? Um, right now, what is happening is uh, people are moving some money to gold because when stock market goes down, they don't buy stock, which is what you should do, right? Stock market was down 5%, which it was towards the end of last year. It's down 20% last year. You should buy. Now, some people did, which is why it's up 5%. But gold's up more because people are starting to think that's safer. They're worried about the dollar. They don't have as much cash at home. That's actually not a bad thing. You know, um, if people are buying gold, they actually feel, they actually feel confident uh, in their own decision-making, and they're not following the government or the media. Uh, which is actually like old school, right? Before TV and radio and everything, people just made their own decisions and people are farming more and they're being their parents in their own household. So the stock market, I mean, it's true, right? Uh, so, so, so gold and silver, I'm going to keep repeating everything and add more, keep repeating everything and add more. The pilot just keeps telling you, sit down, stand up, sit down. I'm going to keep doing that until we land the plane. So gold this year is going to end up up because up 7.5%. It's going to go down, okay? I'm going to tell you something really exciting in a moment that I've never said. 
because every time the story is a little different, hopefully like more of it's true than not. But I'm going to say something a little different today than I've seen in a long time. So gold's up 7.5%. It's going to go down in the next couple of weeks. Just watch that. It will. Um, so that's probably when people should buy it, right? Not today. Don't buy when it's cool. Buy when it's not cool. Stocks are up about 5.5%. They'll go down in about a week or so. So don't buy it today. Buy when it goes down. Because today it's cool. Two weeks from now it won't be cool, right? Bonds right now have gone down 40%. I mean, if you bought it on January 1st, it was almost 5%. Now it's about 3.5%. It's going to go down some more. So that you actually do buy today because you don't want to buy it when it's lower. That's a, you know, like if you have someone getting close to retirement, you have a family member, you have a client, or even yourself, you have $10,000, you want to guarantee yourself $400 a year on that money, and not touch the principal, do it now because in two weeks from now, it'll be three fifty. dollars You know, some of this is big dollars, some of this is small, but it's all dollars. You got to be a good steward of your money. Uh, why am I telling you all these things that are moving in, in real time? Housing market. The housing market has low supply. so. I mean, you probably should sell right now, right? Or you can wait and this housing market will, supply will pick up and then there'll be more competition. You know, the spring, that's what you do. You don't sell in December, you sell in the spring. But that's what everyone does. So it's really smart to do what everyone else does. So we have lots of competition. We can just beat each other up. I mean, yeah, I wish, I mean, I'm just saying the facts, right? I mean, it's so true, isn't it? If I had a dollar for every time, I was asked, like, I mean, I think we need to wait until March or April because that's what everyone does, right? I'm like, yeah, if you want to do what everyone else does, and yes, absolutely wait until there's lots of competition. You want to get your kids into college, you wait until the last minute like everyone else does, and then everyone else is already in, and then they say no to you even with your 5.0 GPA because there's no more spots. And they say no to your house because you have a beautiful house, but someone else, it's a race to the bottom, right? So you want to get on the market when there's no supply, not when there's high supply. So what do you do on the housing market? Okay, like I'm doing everything in real time now, and then we'll fast forward. Well, if there's no competition, you go on the market. When someone says, like, hey, should we sell our house right now? I was like, I don't know. Where do you live? Like, why does that matter? I'm like, well, because you have three homes on the street. We're going to say no. If you have zero homes on the street, I'm going to say yesterday or tomorrow. Like, immediate. And you can go as high as you want as long as it shows well. We got a listing going live on, on Friday with, like, 13 showings. And, you know, the square foot price is probably high, but people want what they can't have. But once they can have it, then they not only don't see the same value in it, but if there's 10 Princess Diana Beanie Babies at Toys R Us, no one buys any of them. That's actually what happens, guys. Like if, if they found like a gold mine, gold prices would plummet. And when, when, companies, when companies are not making money and stock prices are still high, stock prices plummet. because People start seeing the truth. And so now people are starting to wake up. They're getting out there more. Their kids are back in school, right? So they have more time. So gold's going to go down. Inflation's coming down. Prices are going down. Stocks are... Everything's up right now. You, you realize that like everything is up right now? Like everything. You could say inflation is down. Inflation is not down. Inflation is lowered. Like the housing market's up. You know, it might not be as high as it was a year ago, but it's up. You have to look at everything in a, you know, if my son this morning, my son was great. Both of my boys are great. And, and I'm saying that because that doesn't happen 24 hours a day. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I actually kept thanking them. And I gave them like awards. I think I bribed them a couple of times. My wife's out of town. And I mean, I don't know if I'm parent of the year, or, or, but it worked for this morning. But yesterday, my old son was not great. The day before, my youngest son wasn't great. So if I only looked at that one day, my sons are awesome. But if I only looked at that one day as a referendum on who they are, then they're not great, right? But they are great. I'd have to remember it's more than... But in real time right now, guys, everything is up. Again, yes, prices are down from when they were unrealistic last spring. But everything is up because nothing will plummet again. Like ever, it will in a vacuum, like over a couple of year, year strength, uh, time frame in about five years. But right now, everything is up, guys. Like you don't go to the grocery store and you're like, wow, I have so much extra money in my, my, my bank account. And like, I thought it was going to be $300, but it's like $74. No, it's $296 instead of $300, but a year ago is $150. Does that make sense? So it's coming back down. And the home prices, you know, the house is half a million dollars. You're not getting it for $250. You might get it for $495. Now, there's some really good news there, and you guys know this. Due diligence fees a year ago were 100000 Now they're like a dollar. It's like, you want me to put $1,000 down? I'm like, you realize a year ago, $50,000, you're not even making an offer. So the housing market is still really hot. And the stock market is actually still pretty strong. And the gold market is really strong. Everything's really high. I mean, you guys have to hear that. I'm going to say it one more time and I'll stop. Okay, so where are we going and what are we going to do about it? This year, I predict that. Stock market will go, and I say I predict, all I'm doing is passing forward experience and global markets and economic variables we all can research, if this, then that. 
you know, this goes up, this goes down. Okay, well, that's going up, so it's probably going to go down. This goes up this time of year, then this goes up this time of year. I just did a lot of homework. When you do your homework, you're actually improving your grades. Again, go back to my boys. Like when they don't do their homework and they do bad in school, I'm like, did you do your homework? No, I didn't. Well, then stop complaining. Like it's not because little Bobby looked at you the wrong way or, or little Rebecca like pulled your hair. It's because you didn't do your homework. You know, like if we do our homework and don't read stories, I mean, the number one goal of stories is for you to read them, not to give you research and development. So you have to do your own. Everything is going to be fairly smooth because it was so rocky. Like there's, not, there's, no, there's no appetite for any more turbulence. You know, the pilot can give you a little turbulence when you get on the plane, and they give you a warning sometimes, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're like, hey, guys, we're not going to be able to take the seatbelt sign off. We can have a really bad turbulence. I want to prepare you. Sometimes they're like, hey, guys, I was, you know, please put your seatbelts on. We did not expect that, and there's no pockets for us to get in to get out of it. That's what we just went through, right? But the pilot's number one goal is I'd rather take an extra half hour to get to the final destination, to get out of this turbulence as fast as possible. And so right now, consumers, employers, and the government are all doing everything possible to get us out of the turbulence. The government is, because some of them want to help the, us, and some of them want to get reelected. The I mean, it's true. Um, the employer is because they want to find that balance of, okay, I don't have to raise prices as much. Because fear, guys, is it's either fight or flight or freeze, right? Some people froze, and some people fleed, but no one really fought. I mean, in the housing market they did. They fought, and it went too far. Now here's the thing, housing prices did fall. We, no one talks about that. Housing prices went down 15% last year. Now you might say in your community it went up, but then two other communities it went down. Stocks, there's some stocks that went through the roof, and other stocks that plummeted. There, there are some precious metals that went through the roof, and others that plummeted. There are some bonds and bills that went up, and some went down. But overall, it was too high last year and the year before. And so this year, I'm going to give you prediction and plan, and it's going to work, at least the plan and part of the prediction, is stock market is going to start coming down, then go back up. And it'll finish the year probably 7 to 10% up. So it'll be a good year, nothing crazy. So how do you make money in that market? How do your clients make money? Well, they make money not buying when it's high right now. They wait. They go, okay, it's up 5%. If it goes down a few days in a row, then I'll buy. I mean, you can either do shorts or you just actually just watch it go down, right? Gold is high right now. It's going to come down. So you're like, okay, I want to buy gold or silver. Silver is about the same. Then I'll wait a little bit and then I'll come down. Um, treasury bonds. I'm getting the point. I know. I start hearing the music. It's time it's Time for someone more who's smarter, more entertaining to get up here. I hear you, Megan. Um, so... I know this is not like the most glamorous conversation, but the most successful people have the most boring schedules, guys, and it, with repetition. And if you ever worked out or exercise, like you do the same thing, you gotta switch it up occasionally, your muscles get used to it. You do the same thing every day, eventually it works. It just doesn't look fun on the front end. I mean, Daryl, you were in amazing shape. Like, you just do the same thing, right? When you start eating bad, it's because you ate whatever, right? But when you knew what you were gonna eat, when you knew when your meal plan, you knew when you were gonna work out. So what I want you guys to know is like, okay, stock market's a little high, I'm gonna watch it. If it goes down 5%, my clients are gonna buy. You know, this is really high. If it comes down a little bit, again, treasury bonds, if you have older clients get ready to sell, they don't do their money, they want some money for retirement, treasury bonds are pretty high right now. They were higher on January 1st. They're coming down. If you wait much longer, they'll come down more. So I would tell your clients that are older or just want to pocket a little cash. If they sell a home, they don't want to put the money, they can put it in that. Let's talk about real estate, though. Let's talk about real estate. Like stocks, guys, every stock does not go up and down at the same time. And every community does not go up and down at the same time. So a couple of things here that are really important, and we'll pull it all together. Last year started crazy for everyone. It doesn't matter if it was 100,000 or 10 million. It doesn't matter if it was in good shape or bad shape. It really did not matter. I mean, you can have a home with no, no pictures. They don't even care of the condition. We sold homes, the most beautiful homes in the world, over market value. We, so, we sold homes that were like, I really hope we get an offer of in coming soon status because once we have to add pictures, this film's not going to show well. It did not matter. Like there was no rhyme or reason, right? And, and people were just buying, buying, buying. It did not matter. 100,000 out of diligence, 200,000, 300,000. Like, it was the opp opposite of Oprah. Like, no one was getting a house. So you don't get a house, you don't get a car. There's no cars, no houses. And so you won the lottery if you overpaid for a house or a car. Is that true? I saw like F 150s from 20 years ago going for 150 grand. I mean, it was just, it was just, it was bonkers. It was bonkers. And so you're thinking, like, well, that means we, may, we have to revert to the other side. Well, on one hand, yes. Like, if I just looked at this from a helicopter, not on the ground, I'd be like, no, home prices have to plummet. They have to go down the drain. I mean, they're just way too high. But the good news is there's still no supply. 
The pandemic told people not to move. The pandemic told people to enjoy your home. The pandemic told people to work from home. The pandemic told employers to work from home. The pandemic told people to vacation at home. Like everything, you see pops of like vacations going up, but people are now pulling back. You know, they're scared about grocery bills. And so there's, I mean, raise your hand if you're spending money like you used to. Most people have pulled back. They're pulling back on everything. And their home is their safe haven. After what everyone just went through, the one place that their mind, their minds had finally shifted to, I'm okay being at home. Like for so many years, the home was just more of like, well, I don't need this much. I don't need as much home because I'm never here, right? Like I, I don't need I don't need this much home because I don't work from home and I don't school from home and every room was just like not used. And when you sell a home three years ago, like half the rooms were storage. Now it's like oh, so that's where um, Bobby and Becky did homeschooling. This is where Michael did homeschooling. This is where Bob worked. I work in the this you know, and they're putting up walls and everything to chop. You know, they're they're taking an open floor plan and they're chopping it. Well, um, this is a random side note. I'm just giving you everything I got. The open floor plan is going away too because a lot of people, again, to that point, they're never fully coming back. I want you guys to be out there. I mean, I hope I love coming in the office because I want to separate. I can't work out from home. I can't really work from home. But some people can. They just didn't know they could. And some people can vacation in their backyard and it brought families, it brought some families closer and some others further apart. And so if families, bless you, if families were meant to get closer and closer, they really did. And if there was any strife in the life, like the, the pandemic really magnified it. And so what's going to happen in housing? Well, if supply went up, I will tell you, if supply goes up in a particular community, which could happen in some communities where they have a lot of equity, but it's low price points. And so they're more sensitive to the payment. This is why I'm going to go into the weeds. But this is probably the best part. So just stick around a little bit longer. If we're on a plane, I, I just won't open the, the door at the gate yet. I'll just fly around, fly around Charlotte a little bit longer. Um, there's some communities that are the lower price points. Investors are going to kind of wait a little bit because, you know, rents are coming down, prices have come down. The lower price points are more sensitive to having equity. If a million dollar home has 50,000 equity, they're not moving to get their share of 50,000. But if a 250,000 dollar home has 50,000 equity, that's life changing. And if they default on a payment or two, because remember Teresa saying last year, the forbearance, you don't make a payment for four months, now you have to make six payments all at once. Where do you miraculously come up with six months payments if you couldn't make the first one in June, right? I mean, and, and so the 300,000 are a buyer, the 250,000 are a seller, a homeowner, they're the ones that are potentially gonna default and now it's a race to the clock, right? Now it's a race to, can I sell my house and, and preserve dignity and credit and equity? Does that make sense? The high end price points, they're like, ah, oh, you know, it was worth 900, that's worth one one. It was worth 3 million, now it's worth two five. Like it's, it doesn't trade, the, the standard deviation is not large enough for it to matter. But for the lower price points, you're gonna see some communities. You're gonna see some communities where the demographic is lower income, we're gonna see people go on the market because they're going to race the market to avoid the foreclosures. Now, bank REOs is still really low. You will see some of them, but they're going to be in the same communities too. You're not going to see them in a $2 million community where they owe 800 and now it's worth 2 million. They're just going to go on the market, but you will see in a community where they can't make their next payment, but they have 50,000 equity and they either held on too long. But I think a lot of people are going to actually not hold on too long. They're going to sell. See in 2008, everyone tried to sell and, it, and all that supply depleted demand immediately. The other thing that happened in 2008 is that everyone owed more than it was worth because they were getting pick a pay loans, right? Like where it's like, <laughs> it's like not interest only, like there was principal and interest and it's like interest only. And then it was just like the infomercial, like it's not $39.99, it's not $29.99, it's $19.99. If you buy now, you get two. I mean, it was like everyone gets a house. That was Oprah style back then, right? It was like 600,000 houses were like $900 a month payments. And then three years later, they actually have to pay more than 900 or they just don't have a job. Like I can't even pay 900. But they owe seven hundred and a five hundred thousand house, but now it's worth four hundred. That's not happening today. So the really good news is that's not happening today. The really bad news is that's not, that's not happening today. So there's gonna be a lot of homes on the market. The good news for those homeowners is they will sell their house. The bad news for the homeowners is so are their neighbors. So in the lower price points, you're gonna see a lot of homes hit the market. You will. They are cashing out their equity. There's a lot of people, even on the higher price points, that are starting to think about it. It's like, what if I just sell and rent and let the market go down? This is money for my kids. This is money for college. This is money for retirement. You'll see a little bit of that on the higher end, but you're going to see a lot of that under 400. 
where they have 50 to 100 grand equity. They're like, I don't have that my whole life retirement savings. That's a lot of money, guys, for all of us. And so what does that do for the market? Well, for those markets, it just, it hurts it really bad, right? We talk about demand and supply. If there's no homes in the market and three homes hit the market in the same month, no one does anything, guys. You're thinking, well, if there's, if there's four buyers, three of those four buyers will buy each of those three homes. There's still one more buyer. That's not how it works. Bidding wars are not because there's 27 buyers who wanted that house before they even knew the house was available. It was because there was 10 buyers that wanted a similar house and then nothing else hit the market and this home hit the market and they start compromising. I'll get rid of this want to get this need. And then they, their earnesty overtakes their importance level and they're like, well, now I want it even though my time frame is longer because other people want it. And so now they go home and talk to their spouse. And they're like, okay, I really didn't need this but now I want it and the want becomes a need and then the 10 buyers becomes 25 buyers. And then now that home's going to, goes on the contract and now those buyers are prepared for the next house. They did 40,000 on a million, do, million dollar house. Now I'm gonna do 100,000 due diligence in the next house because now I'm getting the next one. And, and it becomes this like self-fulfilling prophecy where like the no supply just creates demand that really should never even have been there. Um, and, and what's happening now is the opposite where everyone's like, well, I've got my house, right? And some people wanna move, God bless you. Um, some people want to move, but there's no houses. And so on the higher end market, there's no houses. And so that's keeping prices high. But on the lower end market, I say lower end, my first house was 150. I can't imagine I'm saying like under 400, but that's below the median price in Charlotte, which is almost half a million dollars. There's going to be a lot of supply. There really is because people are going to sell. And, and so what do you do for your clients? Well, if they're looking to buy a higher end home, prices are not going to come down. They're just not. If the home's in good shape, it actually may even go up this year because there's a lot of buyers that pulled out of the stock market before it went down the full 20 or they bought back and it went up five, like they're in a good place. There's a lot of buyers that sold their home and they're renting and they're ready. And there's a lot of buyers that are gonna sell a high-end home to buy a high-end home and they actually have a commodity that no one else has because the supply for high-end homes is very limited because no one did that during the pandemic. Like no one did that. What did happen is some of the lower end homes sold and investors weren't there to buy them, right? All the I buyers, open door and closed door and Zillow, and they, they all went away. So a lot of the investors for these lower end price points went away. And again, they have equity though, the price is still high. So what I would recommend to my clients, to my friends, I mean, people reach out every day, they reach out to you, you see them at the grocery store, you see them at social committee, you see them at the bus stop, is this year across, I'd say all, commodities. The treasury bond is different in the fact that you actually, well, you want that rate to be high because that means you can get a higher return. And, and it's just one entity, right? Like it's, it's 4%. You have a million dollars in retirement at 70 years old. You get 40,000 a year. Some people can live off that with social security and everything. The stock market's going to have some stocks go up, some stocks go down. I'm not a day trader. I'm not a stockbroker. But overall, the market's going to kind of be rocky. But it'll be a normal flight. Like once you land, you're like, oh, that was a normal flight. It was a little bumpy at times. So in the stock market, in precious metals, and in real estate, I'm going to challenge y'all to watch the micro market. You know, Megan said economists, like no one thing I learned as an economist is micro and macro have nothing to do with each other. And my wife and your wife may both be really nice people and both have a lot in common and similar values, but they're very different because they're different people, right? And so one of the mistakes I always made in my life is... And to this day, I have to remind myself, while I like quality time, so I want to give my wife quality time. Well, she wants act service. So I need to do act service first. And well, you know, North New York City's going crazy good. So Charlotte has to go crazy good. Well, it will, but maybe not today. Like, just because something else is working out over here, just because Zillow says the housing market's crazy hot. I mean, it's a hot market, but here's what you're not hearing. If there's 10, $3 million homes, that's $30 million. This, that's $30 million, right? How many 300,000 homes have to add up to $30 million? A hundred, right? So there's more, the bigger homes, when you look at a mean or, or even a median, for that matter, but more mean, when you see someone says average, if there's only 10 homes that sell and three of them are high end and several low end, those three $4 million homes is 12 million. The seven 400,000 homes is only 2.8 million. So you average that, and the average price point is 1.4 million. You see how I'm going with this? Like that doesn't mean that we have the highest price point, the hottest market in the history of the world. Because remember I said six months ago, everyone's moving here. Well, then who's buying where they're selling? Does that make sense? 
you know, like prices are plumbing on groceries. That's great. Well, then those companies are going out of business. Stock market's going to go down. So nothing's going to be crazy rocky on a macro scale. You're not going to hear of a 2008. You're not going to hear of a $2 million home going for 900000 I remember, Jennifer, when you lived in Marvin and the housing market, province down south, was like $600,000. Now they're $3 million. That will never happen again. At least I'm kind of getting older. Some of you young whippersnappers may see it in your lifetime. But like we're going to see a 10 to 20% drop, which if you're in the 20%, you're going to really feel it. And it's not really even 10%. It's more of like some communities are going to go up and then a bunch of smaller price point ones are going to go down. And so I'm going to challenge you guys and encourage you guys to be hyper-focused as the expert on all facets of this. You know, when, when Tesla plummeted a couple weeks ago, this whole stock market went down because one of the big stocks, right? Well, that doesn't mean the stock market was down. You could have bought a different stock that went up that week. That's being the expert. And it's no different in housing. It's no different in precious metals. You know, diamonds were really high, but they got too expensive. So that's why they're moving to silver and gold. You start looking at a really deep level. Um, so I want to encourage you. There hasn't been a time in many years. If you've only been in the business two, three, four, even five years, you, you had to be really smart and a really good person. Now you just have to be really smart and a really good person, but think about it differently. Because last year it was like, okay, can you help me win this bidding war? Awesome. Can you get my house in the market and do good marketing to get top dollar? Awesome. Now it's like, when do I do it? Now it's like, do I do it? Now, now it's, can I buy knowing I'll have a house to buy? Because you may not be able to. Or can I sell knowing I'll have a house to buy? If that makes sense. Um, I usually will tell you that the housing market is going to go through the roof or it's going to plummet. And the stock market is going to go through the roof or plummet. And to be honest, if I use 10% just to, like, to keep it simple, I imagine that most commodities, and a house unfortunately is a commodity, it's life or death for the ones that live there. Most are going to be about 10% um, up or down. Um, and so it's going to feel like pretty even across the board. The stock market will finish about 8%, 10% up. The housing market will finish about 8%, 10% down. But some will go up 20%. Um, but it's a lower price point. So a $400,000 house that goes down 10%, that $40,000, guys, that was their equity. That was their family vacation the next year. And so I want to encourage you guys that if you have clients and family members and friends or even yourself and you have a home that's in the FHA limits, that's, that's in the conventional loan limits, that that's, that is where all the equity is that is a large percentage of the wealth. Again, a $2 million home that has 300000 equity, they'll, they're like, well, I'll just put that in my down payment in my next house. Like, why would I move? And so no one's putting their house on the market, so, that's, so prices aren't coming down. And the high-end market actually will probably go up because I just got off the phone with um, Dan Farris, former lieutenant governor, but it wasn't about politics. It's about he's doing a really high-end community in Raleigh. They want to bring it to Charlotte. He's doing a California modern community, five, $6 million homes. He sold the first one. He's building specs like Cardinal Crest style. He wants to do it here. And he's like, Dave, do you think I'm crazy? I'm like, no, actually, I think they're going to sell like hotcakes. Five, $6 million homes, they're going to build specs. The hyper high-end market is going to keep going up. Some stocks will always be good to buy, but the overall, and the stock market will go up 8%, but the overall housing market will come down because a little bit because there's just so many more small, smaller price point homes in the market. Does that make sense? Um, so tie it all together. Go back to interest rates. I'm going to kind of just circle the wagon. This is not as like flashy as, but this what no one wants to talk about is it's going to be kind of even keel. And so our clients need to hear that nothing crazy is going to happen this year, which is actually really good as friends, you know, that nothing's crazy is going to happen. But our clients need to understand why they should or shouldn't do something. If we just say, yeah, the market's going to kind of be even, you know, overall it's probably going to look like it went down 10%, but some communities will be high, some communities will be low. They don't understand. What does that mean? Is it going up or down? And the answer is yes. Does that make sense? I mean, it really is. The, the, the housing market is going up and down. Go back to stocks for a minute. Let's have fun with this because every one of your clients owns stocks and you probably have some too from a 401k or Roth IRA retirement. If you watch the market, you can't really just retirement. If you watch the market, if you tell your clients, stocks go like this, guys, just like most planes. Stocks go like this. Housing doesn't do that as much because it's not as liquid, but stocks do that almost weekly now. Stocks have been doing this every week for years now. And so it'll finish 8% higher. Here's a challenge. It's already up 5.5%. Now I'm getting to the weeds, but this is the weeds where the, you find the diamonds in your backyard. Stock market's already up 5.5%. So if you go out there and put all your money in the stock market and say, David said it's going to be up 8%, it's already up 5.5%. And it's going to come down, and you guys are going to be like, 
oh, that David, you know, like he said it was going to go up. Then it's going to go up. You're like, darn it, I bought it at the wrong time. And the year's over, it's going to be up 8%. That means it's only going to be up 2.5% 2 percentage points more than today. Does that make sense? And so if you put all your money in now, you're going to have a really rocky 11 months and your destination is not Hawaii or Mexico. Your destination is like Raleigh. You're like, I really just, I just really flew around for like 10 hours on a bumpy flight. I end up in Raleigh. I end up in Myrtle Beach. I mean, I, my family likes Myrtle Beach. But you fly around for 10 hours. The, the, what I just say makes sense. If you put all your money in stock market right now because it's going to go up 8%, it's already up 5.8%. It's going to have to come down for you to make your money or you're only going to make 2%. So you don't buy high. Real estate doesn't have the same, doesn't give you the same ability to just wait for supply to pick up in the higher end market. But in the lower price points, guys, if you have investors, tell them to start watching. Tell them to start watching. Don't buy stock, let it come down. Don't buy gold, let it come down. Let silver come down the same day as gold. See, silver and gold kind of do the same thing, right? And people buy silver because it's less expensive than gold. People buy stocks when the treasury bond comes down, which is which it's doing, right? That's why stocks are going up. They have an invert relationship. But if someone's looking, you know, I think our luxury price point is 750. If someone's looking 750 and above, you're not gonna see, you're not gonna see prices come down. The price are gonna come down on 400 and below. Um, and it's gonna be fierce because they're gonna get all their equity out before it's too late. And if you care about your client, which I know you guys do, we have to make sure they know that. Um, you know, the higher price points, you could tell them their $1.3 million homes worth two million. They're like, that's great, where am I gonna go? But you tell a 300,000 house, a house is worth 400, they're like, bye Felicia, I'm out. Like, I'll just, I'll just, I'll stay with a family member, I'm on the couch, I'm not gonna not put $75,000 in my bank account. Does that make sense? That's what's happening in this market. I love it. I get excited about knowing, okay, if I know, if a pilot tells me it's going to be a little bumpy but nothing crazy, I'm good, right? If I go to a restaurant on a Friday night and they tell me an hour and I get sad at 30 minutes, I'm really happy. But if they see me right away and three minutes later, we don't have our tea and our water and our wine, I'm like, waiter, waitress, what's going on here? Are you guys open? I'm happy at 30 minutes. I'm not good at three because the expectation was an hour and here the expectation was immediate. So I wanted you guys to know if you watch the markets very carefully as the expert because you're being present, then you're going to be their best friend because you're going to be like, look, stock market went down today. If you watch it, I bet it's going to come down. Now, you're, we're not day traders, guys. I, I, I can't tell you the exact day of the week everything goes up and down. I just want you to hear that stocks are already are high and they're not going to keep going up because the economy is not amazing. Oh, by the way, we already had a recession. And you guys know that, right? You can't change the definition of a recession. The recession is two straight negative GP quarters. The reason why that one fell on deaf ears is because unemployment rate right now is really low. The economy right now is actually pretty healthy. Unemployment right now is only three and a half percent. I'm throwing a lot at you guys, but you guys are all hanging in there with me. I'm giving you guys everything I got so you can all make your own decision. But you also have all the facts when someone asks you questions. You know, when you go to the doctor, the nurse does all, takes all your vitals, and the doctor tells you everything. And they're like, your blood pressure is good. Why do they tell you your blood pressure is good if you don't have to do anything about it? They just want you to know. Your cholesterol is a little high. We'll talk about that later. But here's the real issue, right? You need to know everything. So you don't just go get medicine and say, well, I need this medicine. Well, that's for blood pressure. Oh, my blood pressure is good. Never mind. But if you don't know your blood pressure is good, you just assume, you know, I was 36. I told my doctor I have high cholesterol. My doctor didn't believe me because I was only 36. So my doctor had to do more tests. I want you to have all the tests. So you have all the facts. Does that make sense? Smaller price point homes, I say smaller, below the median average, 450 and below, are definitely going down this year. Like that, you can like, you can pay your mortgage on that. You can set your alarm clock on that. Um, million and above, if it's in good shape, the whole country is watching North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Nashville, I mean, the cities and all this, the Dallas area, Fort Worth, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Same thing we've always talked about. It's, it's all the, the crescent at the bottom. And, and so what I get really excited about, and we're, we're going to finish up here, land, land this plane the right way, all perfect timing, 11.05, is I love being present with my friends because I can genuinely be the expert. I don't want them to think I'm the expert because we have good marketing or good reputation. I want them to feel that I'm the expert when we tell them to sell at 450 and they sell at 470 because we time the market and, and we have lots of buyers and great broker relationships. And then two months later, it's going for 390 and they're like, wow, you got me out just in the nick of time. And, and I want to tell them like, look, you buy that home that's 400 now, it may go down to 350, but if it's your forever home. And so what I get excited about, last thing I'll share is, this market is hyper-local. 
it's hyper local to not just Charlotte, but it's hyper local to each community. And it's always kind of like that, but the last three years it wasn't, guys. I mean, the percentage increase in appreciation was $300,000, $3 million. It did not matter. Again, I want to remind you of that. Now you need the pictures and you need the staging. The house has to be flawless. It has to be in the right brackets and it has to be priced where it needs to be and you need to time the market when inventory is low. And if you do all those things and you don't watch the media, you don't listen to the news, then yeah, like I feel like the market is crazy hot and it's going to cool when all the lower price point homes hit the market. Now, when does that happen? Last thing. The lower price point homes are going to hit the market when the first lower price home hits the market and doesn't sell opening weekend. Because then they're going to drop their price and then the neighbors going to be like, wait, you were 450, now you're 425. I mean, I owe 350. I need, I need that 50,000. And what they're going to do is they're going to come on for 400. And then the 425 is going to go to 385. And it's going to kind of test the bottom. It's going to go, yeah, it's going to, it's going to test the bottom. It's going to be a race. The high end market is, you're going to see an extreme, guys. And so overall, it's going to be down about 10% because there's going to be so many more lower end price points hitting. Um, and then interest rates, last thing I'll say about that, I'm just kind of tying up over all these pieces. Interest rates will come down. They'll come down once the market says to come down. You know, like right now, the market still feels hot. It's actually picked up steam. You know why the market picked up steam? Because sticker shock went away. You realize that, right? Like everyone's back on vacation or back in school. They're going on vacation, they're back in school. Everyone's buying homes again because 6%. They're like, oh, yeah, my parents had 10%, they had 15%, they had 20%, I had 7%. Sticker shock's gone. So the buyers are back. But the buyers are not back at the $300,000 price point because no matter how much you market that 6% is still an all-time low rate outside of these three years, they're like, that's great, but I can't afford the payment. But at $2 million, like, I'll do 6% and a year from now I'll just refinance or I'll just pay it off. You see where I'm going with this? No matter how you look at it, companies, companies, um, our earnings are not as high, so that's why stocks are going to start coming down. But then they'll rebound because we are going into a good economy. We already are, we're actually out of the worst. To be honest, the irony is when we were in the recession, it didn't look like a recession because there was no supply and so demand was just crazy high. The, the irony is when inflation went up and everything just stopped, that showed that there was not the, the same appetite last summer as there is today for the high price points outside of the Uber high. The Uber high price point isn't who we're talking about for diapers and milk and gas, guys. We're talking about the family of four on a $75,000 household income that makes $4,500 a month and an extra $100 at a grocery store, an extra $100 in gas. They're putting on a credit card, but the credit card went from 15% to 25%. Does that make sense? So I want you guys to hear this. There's two extremes. There's two extremes right now. 400 and below is going to go down, and it's going to go down probably 20, 25% this year. And then 800 and above is just going to keep going. It's going to go as much as it needs to go. Now, right now, if you have high-end buyers, the homes are selling pretty fast, but you put little money down and there's not as many buyers. And most of the buyers are not local. And, and that, that's going to continue. So you're not going to have as many buyers, so it won't go through the roof, but it's definitely going to keep moving in the right direction because 10% on 200, 2 million is 200,000. That's a big increase, right? But there's so many more low price point homes. So be the local expert, guys. I mean like weekly. Do not watch the news. Do not share articles or test them. Send them over. Send them be honest with yourself. Like, does this feel right? Because I've got two listings. I've got a two million that's sold open in weekend, and I have a 400,000 I'm struggling to sell. i got a billion, but it's not in the best part of town, and it doesn't show as well as a three million that's crazy overpriced, has tons of offers. Even the same neighborhood, you're going to see a home that's 2.2 that sells faster than the one that's 1 1.5, the 1 1.5 is bigger, but the 2.2 has all the bells and whistles. It's back to, it's back to emotion for the high-end buyer. And it's back to logic for the low end buyer. Low end, when I say low end, low end price point, not consumer. Does that make sense? Last year was all emotion, guys. The year before was all emotion. But now the low price points, it's all logic. Um, people are not going to be buying as much stock because they don't have as much money. So if you have consumers, clients, friends, or yourselves that want to buy stock, I would tell them just wait a couple weeks. Same thing with everything else. But yeah, for housing, and I would keep saying it, I just want to make sure you guys hear this loud and clear. What other parts of the country are doing has already happened. Um, until you see, you're not going to see New York plummeting. New York City is actually pretty popular right now. California already had a mass exodus. It's actually stabilizing. See where I'm going with this? I just saw an article the other day that said that Phoenix, Austin, San Diego, and then like one other really popular market were going to plummet this year. 
And I read it, and I laughed, and I threw it away. I don't remember what the newspaper was. I can guarantee you that Phoenix, Arizona, Austin, Texas, the Silicon Valley of the, of the Mid-South, San Diego, California, um, which is like strong economy, but also massive tourism. Everyone wants to live in those three places, one more. It was like some really popular area like Nashville or something. They said they're going to plummet. But they said that because it was one variable where like a lot of homes hit the market and no one bought them right away. Right? There's one variable where one company went away and they didn't replace that company. But those markets are not going to plummet. They're not. Like Google that story. Just don't share it. You know? Last, 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 last thing I'll say. Just be, use the hearts you have and be human. You know, the Zillow story is nice fodder, but no one sold a home this week because of the Zillow story two days ago. They mention they move on their lives, but they also mentioned there's 11 other realtors. And then they post it on 11 pages, and then everyone talks about it. Just like we're never going to have the best search engine because Zillow has it, Zillow's not the expert. I actually don't like when they say that Charlotte's number one. You know why? Because then they think that you don't need to be the expert. It's like, well, why do I need a great agent like Aaron when every home is going to go through the roof because it's the hottest market in the world? Well, yes, yes. If you have a 8,000 square foot home with all the bells and whistles and the best part of Charlotte and the best school district and a cul-de-sac lot that backs the woods, that has a modern pool and spa and an open floor plan, which, they're, that, which people now, I guess, don't want as much, but they still don't realize that yet, but they're going to realize that in about six months. That's next thing. The high-end price point a year from now is going to get destroyed. This year, it's going to do well. A year from now, it's going to get destroyed because people are like, I'm going to scale back. I'm sick and tired of the 5%. You know, last year, stock market went, I can do this all day, so you guys have to shut me up. Stock market went down 20% last year. This year goes up eight. Eight sounds good, but still down 12%. And that 8% is on a lower price point, right? You have $100,000, it goes down 20%. You're down to 800. 8% on that is only 64. Now you're at 864. You're still down. It's not 8% on the middle. You see what I'm saying? It's so hard to get back. And by the way, all those big homes and big lots and a lot of maintenance and open floor plans and high utility bills. They're like, wait a minute, I can work from home. I need another room. I'm going to buy a house that has that room. And I don't need this open floor plan. Actually, I see my family enough. I need a little, quiet. I'm not saying this, but I feel like my wife said this once or twice today. But um, I'm just kidding, kind of. But, but it's all true, though, right? Isn't it true? That's next year. But this year is local, 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 guys. This year is watch the trends. Ask me, we can just bounce ideas off each other. We all have the same knowledge base. We just have different experience levels. And that's what wisdom is, right? Wisdom is, is taking all the knowledge you have and all the data, knowing how to discern it and use it. And that's what our clients need. What our clients need, what our neighbors need, what our own families need is to not watch Zillow. It's not a referendum on Zillow. We use that search engine. I use it all the time. But they're not the economist, right? They, they, they're going to put out there the hot housing markets either because that's where they're selling the most leads or that's because you know they read one thing where like there was like this one, again, it's no different than Oh, wow, like that's the best school. No, it's the best school if technology is most important. This is the best school if teachers are most important. This is the best school if student to teacher ratio is most important. You see what I'm going with this? This is the best school if graduation is the most important. All those rankings are for subscriptions, guys. All those rankings, you guys are the experts. The housing market is going to look like it went down 10%. Some people are going to get destroyed if they don't make the right decision, and other people are going to soar. And so we just have to help people make the right decision. Does that make sense? Um, we're supposed to do a QA. I just threw a lot at you. Is this helpful? You sure? Any questions? You have to ask questions. We need at least two questions. Thank you, Sean. What are your thoughts in the urban uptown Gilward kind of one two bedroom condo range that you still see from people in those two neighborhoods, even though they're under that five hundred and within that lower price point you're talking? Yeah, about? yeah, and I'm talking lower price point for single family homes, okay. um, where the family has fifty to hundred thousand equity. And they see one person not sell immediately. And so they want to sell before the, to protect their equity. See, I always equate stocks and houses because everyone looks at the stock market. No one really looks at the housing market. But it's really basic. The stock market, you know why stock prices go down 20%, not just 5 It's because it goes down 5% and then everyone freaks out and sells. Warren Buffett always says, or he said at least once, I'm sure he says it all the time, is Americans love to buy high and sell low. They love to. They dream about buying low and selling high, but no one else says it's cool. It's not sexy to buy, to buy low and sell high because no one says to do it. They talk about the stock market plummeting, so what do you do? They panic and they sell. So no one's panicking on a half million dollar condo in Uptown because that's actually a luxury. That's almost like a, lux, that's like a luxury condo, if that makes sense. Um, and it's a different demographic. That demographic's making 
those are young professionals making eighty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Again, big bonuses at the banks. That's actually where a lot of the income is. Is you know South End, Dilworth, Myers Park, East Over, East Charlotte, Plaza, Midwood, Elizabeth, Chantilly. That's actually a lot of money. Um, if anything, you're going to see investors prop that up and start coming back. The investors are coming back, and um, that will help. Here's the thing: the investors come back after prices go down. Well, what I don't want is our clients to be the prey to the investors because our 450 home, we didn't sell it fast enough and went to 350. And now our family can't buy their new home or put their kids through college because that $100,000 went away. No one's buying the 450 home right now, but after 10 sales and now it's 350, the investors are going to flood. That's a good question. One or two more? Yeah. So we're talking <coughs> about like that 450 and under kind of like in the right now. What do you think? going to maybe happen over the next three, four years. Yeah, that's awesome. So Jennifer asked what's going to happen in the next three, four years if right now it goes down. If they're stable and they can stay, they yeah. can kind of get that back. For sure. So I always live in three minutes and three years. So I appreciate you asking that. The three minutes is everyone's just kind of, well, they're just kind of all waiting, right? Like someone has to list and not go on the contract immediately and then be told you need to make some upgrades. Again, the two men are home, they're like, sure. They just make the upgrades or they already made them. The four hundred thousand our home is like, I, I don't really have the money um, to make these upgrades. Just drop the price, and the neighbor's like, "Wait, I was really excited when it was four twenty five. You just dropped it to four hundred. If you don't get four hundred, I, I, I mean, I was banking on this for retirement, and that just happens fast, Jennifer. It's just a matter of this spring. If one or two of them go on the market and don't sell fast, the neighbors talk really fast, and then someone gets relocated. Someone's getting ready to downsize, and they want to wait now. To your point, you know, we always say like, what are you going to do in the next five years? And I've kind of shrunk that for this. So I love that question. I would say it's three years now because we already had our spike and now you'd have a couple of years of the drip. This year, the low price points are going to feel it. Next year, the high price points will feel it. And then in year, th next year, the low price points won't feel it anymore because it'll be lower prices already and the investors will come back and they'll prop it back up. Next year, the high price points will feel it because all of the mass exodus will have kind of happened, if that makes sense. Because once everything gets back to normal, guys, yeah, everyone talks about how everyone's moving here from New York and everyone's moving here from California. But New York and California have been around for a long time. You know what I mean? Like, like New York has a few jobs. <laughs> like, you know, California has a few jobs. I mean, the entertainment industry is in California, tourism in California, you have the whole coast. New York is literally number one for finance. It's like number one or two for entertainment. It's number one or two in tourism. Those markets next year will kind of bounce back. And if New York and California bounce back, we actually have less people moving here next year. You see where I'm going with that? So I love the question because yes, the three, the two, three, four hundred thousand dollar homes, once one goes in the market, it's not flawless and not sell immediately. They drop, everyone follows suit. It's a race to the bottom. The high end market is still going to go up this year probably about 12, 15%. That's why overall it's going to be down about 10, maybe 10%. It's going to be down about 10 because the low price points are going to flood the market. Um, and the investors are going to wait for those to come down, which they know they will. And then they'll scoop them up in 2024, which will prop them back up. And then the high price points will have hit like a number that's too high. And the number of buyers buying the high price points. Because what happens is there's always like the hot new market, you know? Like, like right now, Charlotte's one of them. Raleigh's getting more popular. Raleigh wasn't as popular as Charlotte five years ago. Now it's, it's not like our baby brother or sister anymore. Now it's like our competitor. Nashville's a real competitor. Nashville's not just music anymore. You know, um, other parts, even Knoxville. Yes. So what I hear you saying with all of this, part of the key is that you're identifying where to start on the product. So when you're doing that, So yeah, that's a great question. Like, what do we do to get ahead of the market? How we market properly? If there's no homes on the market, and the homes in flawless condition for that community, I'm not going to say silestone waterfall countertops on a four hundred thousand home. You know, maybe you know, maybe it's you know level one granite, but it's, there's no there's no dog scratches. You know, you got you know, if there's no inventory, you can still go high. I would have set the expectation if we're not on the contract in two weeks, we're going to drop to this price. Again, um, you walk in, they see, hey, we can seat you immediately, but we're, we're a little backed up. So would you rather sit down? It might be a couple minutes before you get served. Or would you rather just wait here and have a glass of wine at the bar? You know, like you set expectations. So I'd say the same thing to the client. We can go for 425. And we, if we get it, it's going to be opening weekend. If we don't get it within two weeks, we have to go right to 400 
no like 419, 9, 874, and 22 cents. Um, but as soon as as soon as a home hits the market and does not move immediately, studies show that like you have to make that one big drop. Because the astute buyer is like, well, you make a small drop and just wait for the next small drop, the next small drop, the next small drop. She's gonna make that one big drop. Um, and it, if there is inventory? Well, if there's no inventory, it should go opening weekend, right? But if it doesn't go opening weekend, it's usually a reflection on condition. And if, it, if it's in flawless condition, there's no inventory and doesn't sell opening weekend, we have a real problem on our hands. You know, um, then it, what? Call You'll call me, yeah. <laughs> that shouldn't happen if there's no competition. Unless there's something wrong with the property. You know, it backs to 485, it has a sloped driveway. You know, it has an issue because then it's price, right? Because if there's nothing wrong with the property, it shows beautifully. You can go as high as you want right now. Like the last couple of years, you can go as high. I mean, you, you, you can make up numbers. Um, but as soon as it doesn't sell, you're plummeting it. I mean, it's kind of like the free market. You just put a high number versus a low. That, that's a good question. Yes, Leon. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, yeah, the, the headline is um, this market is, and I'm being genuine, so I'm using like not flashy words. This market is kind of normal. This market is getting back to old school real estate and economy. Um, this market won't be flashy. You know, it won't be a rocket, it won't be a submarine, right? It's not gonna go straight down, it's not gonna go straight up. Um, and so every other state of market, and, and hopefully I think you saw that follow suit, stock market's gonna go way down, rates gonna go way up, housing prices gonna go way up, like, that's not gonna happen. Um, so two things, one, this is gonna be more of just like a little bit of a bumpy ride, nothing crazy. It's always been something crazy, Leon. So like, the, you know, the, the, so the headline is, this market's a lot of nothing crazy, but then on the local markets, both in a particular community as well as a particular price point, if you leave it at that and the 400,000 buyers, like, wait, the year started, it was 400, now it's worth 320, I just lost all my equity, that 20% is real. So you have to go deeper. The $2 million home is not going down 400,000 to 1.6 if it's in flawless condition. And the 400,000 home is going down 20%, regardless of condition. Then it's going to come back up in 2024 and they're going to kind of flip. The high end market is going to start coming down and the lower price point market is going to come back. So what I said that I've never said before, at least in this arena, is that it's like a lot of nothing, you know? And so you have to be the expert because here's the thing, to that point, Leon, that's a great question. The average person, and I'm going to use the medical industry for a second, the average doctor, the average urgent care doctor, they're really nice people and they have a lot of education. But if they do their job in urgent care, they get you the bandage, they give you the medicine, they give you a prescription, they get you in fast. It's a lot of nothing, right? Like it just feels like a lot of nothing. Even if you go to the doctor, they do lots of tests. Even if the news is really bad, if, if they catch it early enough, you hope it's a lot of nothing. Um, the, the, the 2008 was pancreatic cancer. No expert could fix that, right? 2021 and 22, um, was like winning the lottery, you know, or, or finding a cure for AIDS. Like it's something that like no one saw coming and it was amazing news, you know, like love at first sight. When, when, when you, your wife fell in love with you and you're like, thank you, Lord. But so this year is kind of a lot of, it's going to be the most successful people have the most repetitious, boring schedules. That's what I want to see here. That's what I want to see in the industry. You know, there's not going to be like the, the flashy headlines. Now, Hyper local, the doctor, the best doctor catches what no one else saw. They catch that tumor before it's big enough. See what happens is most of us guys, most, most, most diseases are curable. The challenge is we don't go to the doctor enough. We don't get the right test. We just ignore it. We put our head in the sand, we push it under the rug. And then one day we have a big lump in our side and we find out that we have cancer has been spreading for three years and we never went to the doctor, but we only went, the lump was annoying. But then it became stomach cramps and stomach pains and then headaches. And you can't like Google your way out of that, right? And so what I want is for this to be what I expect, not what I want, what I expect, what I want for the industry and what I expect for the economy is this year is going to be a lot of what looks like nothing. And, and that's what the best doctors can do. The best doctors can navigate the what looks like nothing. Does that make sense, Leanne? Is that someone? Who? All right. um, does that make sense? Again, you've, you, you look, you know, who has ever heard, known or heard of the person who, who died suddenly of a heart attack and it looked like they were in great shape? 
it looked like they were in the great, best shape. But behind the scenes, their blood pressure, their, you know, their, they had a large heart, whatever it was, and it looked like nothing. It's going to look like nothing, but behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. The stock market's already up the majority of what it's going to go up. But you can make zillions of dollars at the right times this year because it doesn't do this. The housing market, it's going to look like it went down 10%, but some people are going to lose their house and lose their retirement money, but it shouldn't be our clients because you should set the expectation. Um, and, and so a lot of people are going to not get a raise. Some people are going to lose their job. Um, not here, not here, guys, um, just like in the, in the world. But um, it's going to look like a lot of nothing, if that makes sense. It's going to look like a very boring year. And so we have to just get under that. We have to take the test. We have to, get, we have to be the physician that does a checkup. I want my doctor calling me. <coughs> excuse me. I want my doctor calling me when I don't go for physical and saying it's been 13 months. Come in for a physical. But doctor, like, I feel good. Like, I feel healthy. Yeah, I know it looks like nothing, but there might be something. That's what I'm trying to encourage you guys on, is that it's going to look like a lot of nothing this year. And for the higher price points, next year is going to wake a lot of people up to have big homes that think they're just, they're very house rich. And it's going to be a big deal for them. If they're thinking about selling next year, Jennifer, they need to do it now at the high price point. If they're thinking about selling three years, the high, the high price point, the three years doesn't start until next year, right? So, so if they're looking to sell in two years, or excuse me, in, in, in three years from now, they're, they're still probably good. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, no. The up higher. Okay. Oh, under four hundred selling now. Like they need to sell now because all their equity, all their wealth is in that house. They need to sell now. The high price point has a little bit longer of a runway, but what's going to happen is they're going to wake up one day and if they're thinking they're going to sell in two years, twenty twenty five, the market will have came down. If they sell this year, they're in a great place. So technically, it's a great time for most people right now. But the high-end price point has a longer window. So it's no different than the doctor saying, you know, Leon, David has higher cholesterol than you. So you have a longer window. You can go out and have that cheeseburger. David probably should have the blackened salmon. You have a longer runway to not eat as healthy because you're svelte and, you know, lean and mean. Does that make sense? I hope it's helpful. So it wasn't like a flashy headline, if that makes sense. Usually it's like, interest rates are going to go through the roof. Prices are going to go through the roof. Stock market's going to crash. This year it's more of like, it's going to be bumpy. And, and at the end of the year, it's going to look like up five, down 10 across all boards. It's just going to be a normal year, but it's going to feel really either exciting or ferocious if we're not ahead of it. Because a doctor who sees a bunch of normal 40-year-olds, they get shocked when that person comes in with a large heart and they're trying to save them from cardiac arrest. We have clients we need to protect from cardiac arrest because the surface all looks like it's all good. It's going to keep going up. But the 400 is not going to go to 600. That's the last thing I'll say about that. Is Jennifer, the 400,000 are home. It can't keep going up 10%. Because that community, the demographics, they went there because it was a reasonable price point. When I bought my first home at 160, if it was 10% higher, it was 180, I couldn't afford it. The $2 million home could go 2.2. .2. No, one, no one cares as long as it has a pool, as long as it has like Wolf and Thermidor appliances. So it's a lot of nothing. It's going to look like a lot of nothing, but behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. It's all under the rug. And then in a couple of years, you're going to pull up the rug and be like, holy cow. So I just want to kind of pull up all the rug now. Does that make sense? One more question? Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, so we talked a lot about the under four. We talked about the high range. How do you feel about kind of like the middle of the road? Maybe yeah, like the, the middle of the road, five, which is a lot, a lot of people. Yeah, five, five seven, fifty. A lot of people started out yeah. at 350. Sure. And now they're kind of in that five sure. range trying to figure out. They, have, they probably have the longest runway. It's probably the safest market. The middle of the range is the safest market because this year um, it'll get felt. You know, when 450 goes to 350, 500 can't stay, right? You'll have to follow and it'll come down a little bit. But the, but the majority of people are in that price point. A lot of the people are in that price point. Next year is when it'll actually go up. It'll be good, that market, the 5 to 750. Uh, because next year when the million goes down, well, actually two things. One, when the 2 million goes down, it's because no one wants to pay 2 million for a house anymore. And it's very attractive to pay six, 700. When the million goes down, which will be later next year, because that's a follow suit, what happens is the real high end market, 3 million goes to two, 2.5, 2.5 five, two, five goes to 2, 2 goes. You know, if 2 million goes to 1.5, the 1.7 can't stay there because the 2 million just went below them. And the 2 million was nicer. It'll eventually come back down. And so, yes, 
three years from now, everything will be lower. Every, and, and, and the low price points will start rebounding. Re, low price points always lead and lag everything else because they're so volatile, because the equity is so important and the payment's so important. Now, the one unknown here is like if you have a rate over 7%, you should be refinancing. If you have a credit card debt, you should be doing a cash or refi. We talk about this. Like, I don't care if it's to refinance to a 6% rate. If you have a 3% rate on your house, but you have $50,000 in credit card debt at 20%, which a lot of our clients do, you, that $50,000 can be amortized over 30 years at 7%. And, and then you fold your $300,000 loan into 7%. Your $300,000 loan is at a higher rate now, but still 30 year amortization. But then you have $50,000 that's going from a shorter amortization at 20% to a longer amortization. You still have a lower payment. And, and so if people, if people, if rates came down, or if more people start consolidating their their debts into the house, that can protect the lower price points. The challenge is most people. I'm raising my hand right now. Most people follow the masses, and the media. It's not a referendum on the media, as like Fox News or MSNBC or radio or TV. The media is just the ones that are the masses, right? They have the megaphone. If they say that the housing market's coming down, which they're starting to talk about. Some are still saying it's going up. I don't. Like, I mean, like some are going saying it's going down. Some is going up at the same time. Like you're in a car in a roller coaster. You're like, I'm going down. I'm going up. And like, you're all in the same car. It's really weird. But when they start saying it's going down, it's going to plummet it. When they say it goes up, it'll push it up. Um, I think they're going to start saying it's going to go down because the average buyer in America is under 450. The average home in America is like 380. Charlotte's 517. That's not normal. You know, you go to the Midwest and the average price point in a lot of small towns is still like high twos. Um, and, and so they need to get out under 400 um, if they're looking to do something in the next three years. But five to 750 has a longer runway. Five to 750 probably is a year and a half. Um, and then three years from now, we will have hit a bottom and then we'll start coming back up across the board. Does that make sense? Megan? Oh, really? Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, yes, Teresa. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, Teresa asked, what about rent? So rent rates are so high, right? So like that's actually a good thing for buyers. Rates are so high. Actually, I think rates, honestly, rates just keep going up because you feel like they would have a little bit of a gap right now when like prices haven't gone up as much. But the investors will come back by the second half of the year. I mean, honestly, guys, like the best news for you is eventually interest rates will go down in the next 12 months. They'll probably go down a little bit later this year when the media starts talking about how the average price point went down 10% in Charlotte and across the country. The media will actually, the media leads and lags. They lead and then everyone follows suit and then they lag when they didn't see it coming, right? Like, um, or there's another story that was more important. They're going to get this in before next year's presidential election. They're going to slide it in. And again, none of this is political. It's just, it's always, it goes both ways. It doesn't matter um, on the politics side. They just have a news cycle, you know? Um, and, and, and the story around that, like the truth around that, guys, is who remembers John Benet Ramsey and Elizabeth Smart? I mean, they, they, they were the biggest stories in the world, those precious girls. One's still alive, John Benet Ramsey, they never actually figured out what happened. I, I was in a, a, a private closed door meeting at an undisclosed location because it's so prevalent here in Charlotte with child trafficking. And Charlotte's one of the top child trafficking sites in the world. There are high-end communities that have homes where young girls, five to 12 years old, are being trafficked and then they're being threatened, the whole family would be killed if they ever say anything. And they're told they can't testify. And no one talks about it. And they don't talk about it because if this was happening during the John Bonet days, if this was happening during the Elizabeth Smart days, like they had a lot of those abductions and trafficking back then. Now it's even the volume is much greater, but it's almost never talked about, even our own backyard. Um, and and it's just it's just how the world works. Like people follow a certain story, it's just what picks up steam and just keeps going and going. And, and COVID, unfortunately, because so many people did die and because it was so scary and so many people, no one knew what to do, it just took over all stories. And so now it's kind of getting back to, there's not a lot of politics this year, which, you know, knock on wood. Um, so now it's going to be more about the economy. Housing market is really important to people. The stock market is really important. Money, money is good for the good it can do. Um, and so they're going to talk about it a lot this year. But your rental rates just... A lot of times I give analogies because it just allows us all to lean in and see what's really going on. You know, and that, that's how you can become the expert is you realize that what happens over here happens over here, right? There is a cause and effect. I actually think rental rates just keep going up. I mean, I don't even know when rental rates will come down. 
because rental rates are so high, but it's because there is a lot. Here's the thing. Rental rates come down when demand for homes goes up and supply allows it, right? Like what's happening right now is people are renting over owning and it's because they're being told the rates are too high. But over the last 50 years, if I told you rates are six and a half percent, you're like, sign me up. I bought sold homes at six and a half percent. I mean, Teresa, what was your first rate on your first home? Nine, nine. Nine, nine. So it's 10 percent on a three year, not a 30. So, so it's a, yeah, so there's a lot of moving parts right now, Leon, but it's a lot of, it's a lot of nothing from the naked eye. Does that make sense? That's what I was getting at is there's no, it's not doom and gloom. You just want to give the good news. You can really protect a lot of families at the lower price points and you can give a lot of great advice to the higher price points. And then in the middle of the pack, I would tell them either make the improvements, make their dream home and stay put or sell their home at the peak sometime this year, rent for a year and let the 1.2 go down to a million. And next year they can save into 200 grand. They can make 200 here. They can save it there. You can time the market, guys. I never understood the expression, have your cake and eat it too, because I feel like that's, I mean, I think it's like have your cake and lose weight too. That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because like have cake and eat it too. Does that make sense? That was a great question. These are great questions. Anyone else while we're together? Those are all great questions. Is this helpful? I throw it. Yes. I think so, right? Yeah, yeah. If we have your contact information, if you put it down, then we'll send it out. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I speak fast for two reasons. Three reasons. Last thing I'll say. I speak fast for three reasons. You need to hear this. One, I grew up in New York City, and I speak fast. I can slow it down. Two, I don't slow it down, so you know it's genuine, and it's not a canned speech. And three, I speak fast because I want to be respectful of time. And this could be a week long discussion, you know? So I try to throw a lot at you. So I love that because I love that you're going to go back and watch because there's a lot there. What I want you to be able to do is not just gloss over the cliff notes, but read the book and then figure out like, okay, this makes sense. Or ask questions. You might go back and be like, hey, when you said this, what did that mean? Or Teresa's point, what about rental rates? What was your name? And nice to meet you, Mika. To Mikhail's point, she's like, well, you talked about 400 below and you talk about a million above, but what about 5750? You talk about 800 above. So these are great questions, guys. I mean, I threw a lot at you. Let it sink in. Let's think about it. But all I ask is, I know most of you, I know your hearts. I know you want to do the best. And I'm going to tell you right now, you don't Google how to fix a headache for your three-year-old that hasn't gone away for three weeks, right? You know, you go, you Google when you want to know how to, when you want to tell yourself the headache is just from stress. But after three weeks of migraines, you're like, okay. Now I'm worried I might have a brain tumor. I'm going to go to the expert to make sure it's not something serious. And what happens is they keep Googling it for six months and then it becomes, it spreads. And then it, they're like, I wish you would have came in six months ago. That's what I want you guys to not do is I want you guys to go to the doctor on day one. I want you guys to be the doctor, even if your patients don't want to go to you. If your patient's like, no, 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 I'm just going to take some Excedrin migraine. I'll be good. No. When your body tells you something, it's actually their way of fighting it. You listen. But before even that, I want you to be able to tell your clients that their body is going to tell them something and you want to catch it before it happens. And that's the physical. Make sure you're doing a monthly, definitely annually, but if not monthly, biannual physical. Does that make sense? Is this helpful? You guys, have, you guys ask really good questions. Anyone else? We'll email us out to everyone, guys, if you want it, the YouTube. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. I hope it's helpful. Thank you. Thank you.